hammers are extremely important to a good piano. There are variable qualities of felts that are used. And then, in addition, there is different degrees of hardness. They all usually have lacquer in them, not all, but most. And the more lacquer you uh, treat them with, the harder the hammer becomes and the less, the softer. If we want to have less, we can needle them in various places depending on the resulting type of tone we want out of that hammer. It's really quite an art. And uh, that would loosen the fibers a little bit and the lacquer between the fibers. And if necessary, if you want it harder or brighter sounding, louder too, we can add more lacquer to it. But that is the voice of the instrument, and a good piano has to have good hammers. If you take the best of pianos and put crummy hammers on them, it's going to sound very poor. Aside from having a good hammer, though, it has to be adjusted very closely so that each hammer hits the one, two, or three strings properly. That if there are three strings that they're leveled, because one could be a little higher than the other, we have to level those first so that the hammer hits all three equally, or all two, whichever. And we don't want to have any dips in the felt because it might not hit squarely on all three. So once that's all leveled and um, accurately placed left to right so that they're hitting squarely on, uh, then you know that you've gotten the ultimate out of the instrument. And then if you need to go brighter or less bright, you can affect that by changing the hardness of the hammer. This is the fulcrum of the lever. So there's another pin inside that um, goes through the hole in the middle. And they try to strategically place that in the right spot so you get the right balance. And in between this hole is lined with felt. You want that to be just tight enough so there's not side play, but not so tight that it binds. And sometimes they get a little too tight on newer pianos, or if it swells up with uh, moisture um, in the air, you might get a little binding there. But it's much easier to open that hole a little bit by compressing it, the sides of the key, or actually uh, taking a little iron, a metal iron we have inside there that will then flatten the felts a little bit. After a while they get worn and you need your keys rebushed. These are called bushings. This is the center rail bushing. And we have also another one under the front of the key. There's another pin that goes through the hole at the bottom to help line the key. And again, it's lined with felt. And we want to minimize side play or pulley keys going this way. So you have to have just tight enough. Better pianos have closer tolerances and actually are more likely to stick because of being a little closer. But that'd be much easier to open that space than to close it, because then you have to take the bushing out, steam them out, clean them out, shim both sides to close the hole a little bit, and then rebush it with more felt. That's really a pain, so we'd prefer to have them a little tight. This is what's called a damper. Most of the strings, this represents the string in this case, have a damper, except in the upper octave and a half or so, uh, variable on different instruments, um, different brands, actually different sizes, different models, but um, pretty close in the same area. Because the higher the notes, the shorter the string, and the quicker they decay, and sometimes they decay way too quickly, so that having a damper just deadens it more than we would like, so you will find an absence of dampers at the upper end. But as soon as they get low enough in pitch, or long enough, which is the same thing, they will last too long and interfere with subsequent notes, if you had no dampers, that are sitting on top of the string or strings. Sometimes it's sitting on three at a time or two. This is a single one. And those felts Keep that string from vibrating when you don't want it to play. When you play a note, the damper goes up, allowing the string to vibrate as long as the key is down. And when you are finished, the damper returns downwards and dampens the sound. It stops it. So those have to be adjusted just right so they don't dampen too quickly, because it might be a little too cold sounding if you do it really abruptly. 
but these are very, very important. When you press your right pedal down on the piano, that is called the damper pedal because it is controlling these and actually lifts all the dampers up at once when you press the right pedal down. So if you are playing the right combination of notes, they sound nice to blend together. And it sort of adds a, uh, like water, making it very liquidy sounding and you can connect better when the strings are vibrating together. But of course, if you leave it down too long or have too many different ones at the same time, you'll create uh, a muddy sound. the pedal. With the pedal they're all going to hold. As soon as I play something that disagrees, 